Look, count two, lecture 25, parametric equations and polar coordinates. And this is the third section, polar coordinates. So we have rectangular. And uh, we are talking about 2D. So that is when you want to find a point in XY plane. You assign two numbers to this point, and uh, that is based on a reference that you put. You produce here, and the reference is you just pick. Point zero zero and align this way, another one this way, they are perpendicular, they are convex and y axis, and then uh, this distance from the y axis is the x coordinate, and distance from the x axis is the y coordinate. <laughs> so Basically, this point is located by giving it two distances, distance from the x-axis and distance from the y-axis. So polar coordinates is another way of locating a, a point. And it makes more sense, especially in uh, mechanics. Now, I will tell you why it makes more sense. Uh, So, so polar coordinates, uh, basically we don't need the y-axis, we just need one axis here. This is two horizontal. So let's just take the x-axis and uh, we want to locate a point in xy plane, or in plane, say, uh, we locate this uh, using uh, this distance from O and this angle, theta, which is measured from this axis. Well, this axis has a positive and negative direction. So from the positive direction of this axis, counterclockwise. So this is counter clockwise. Okay, so this uh, this is called uh, polar coordinates. Uh, what I mean is this. So we assign to this point this distance all and this angle theta. Okay. Now, let me give you some examples because you, the first thing that might come into your mind, what is, uh, uh, what, uh, I mean, can we help say, for example, negative or negative theta or things like that. So let me uh, give you examples. So, uh, So this, this is R theta. So the first one is R, the second one is theta. So let's say three, and theta can be in degrees or radians, but it should be in radians when you are doing scientific computing or anything, not degrees. So let me give a uh, angle in radians. So why was this? So how do you locate this? Uh, locating is very easy. You go first with the angle, if it is positive, we go this way, negative, we go this way. So you draw a line which makes this angle, if it's positive, this way, 5 over 6. And then on this new axis, say, if this is positive, you go uh, this way in the positive direction. Uh, the positive direction is the direction of the uh, uh, 
so this is one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is three uh, in this direction. And uh, well, I can say that when you find this angle, this angle has a initial side and terminal side maybe. So this is the initial side of the angle and this is the terminal side. And the terminal side uh, in this position is a, uh, this position of the terminal side is positive and this way it is negative. The same way that this is positive and negative. So if I have 3, 3 goes this way, minus 3 goes this way. Uh, so this point now uh, is 3 and 5 or 6. Uh, let's find, so and this is a, if I have, if I draw another uh, axis here, the y-axis, then I can say that this point is in the first quadrant. So if this is x, this is y, this point is in the first quadrant. Now let's see. Uh, let's uh, give you uh, again, positive, say, 4 and uh, 3, 5 or 4. So where is it? Uh, again, I draw the, the axis, say the x-axis, positive, negative. And then 3, pi over 4 is uh, somewhere here. So that's the initial side of the angle, the terminal side of the angle, 3, pi over 4 is here, 3 pi over 4, then on the terminal side, 1, 2, 3, 4, so this is the point. So this is this point. And it is in the second quadrant. It is in the second quadrant. Now, can I write this set of coordinates uh, in a different way. Can I, uh, well, well, this is 2 pi over 4, but uh, if I go this way, this is minus what? This is minus, uh, what is it? That is uh, 5, uh, 7 pi over here. I think it's 7 pi over 4. No. That is uh, pi over 2 plus plus. Uh, into pi over 3 pi. Pi pi. So that's minus 5 pi over 4. So if I go this way, if I go this way, then uh, again this is the initial side and terminal side of this angle, and I can write it as 4, comma, uh, say minus 5 pi. Over four. So this is another way of uh, another coordinate set of coordinates. But right here you can tell that the polar coordinates for a point is not unique. At this point, this point here, whatever B, I have found two set of coordinates, and you can tell where this. Uh, where this comes from because uh, I can go this way, this way or this way. So I can have a minus theta with the same positive r. And you can even uh, guess that if I go another round, if I go another round, I'm still here. So I can say it is also 4 comma 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So that's one extra round. But I'm still at point B. Right? Just go one round and I'm still at point B and uh, then I can uh, go another round, another round, 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 round and you can uh, just say, okay, if we do that then we have infinitely many ways of, uh, I mean infinitely many sets of coordinates, polar coordinates for point B. This is not the case for in uh, say rectangular coordinates, it is just one. What, what polar coordinates is not unique. A point has infinitely many different sets of polar coordinates. But they are kind of related. I mean, 
Uh, it's not just something out of, out of blue, no. It's related with this, and it's like 2 pi added to uh, the, the angle. Okay, so this is the second corner. Again, if whatever you do, it is in the second corner. You see, referencing to rectangular coordinates, uh, when I reference to rectangular coordinate system, it's just one thing. This doesn't go into, say, a fourth quadrant when I add 2 pi up. This stays here. Uh, so 2, let me give you another one, 3. And what is uh, point minus, say, uh, 2, comma, say, pi over mm, 3, say. Okay, as I said, we first uh, draw the angle, locate that, and angle pi over 3 is somewhere here. And this is the positive direction for that. So this is positive direction on pi over 3 axis, say. And that's minus 2, so I should go the other way. 1, 2. So this is point B, which is minus 2 and pi over 3. So that's the positive direction, negative direction, and uh, so uh, you might say, yeah, I don't like this thing. And in fact, in many situations, we, sh we should avoid a negative R. But uh, sometimes we can't. In fact, you will see when I graph uh, some polar curves, you will see you cannot avoid that negative. But uh, that's what negative means. So you go uh, the other way. So if when you locate, the terminal side of this angle, then minus means go to the negative direction of that terminal side. Now, what is another way of writing this? If you want to avoid this uh, minus 2, well, we can say, okay, add 2 pi and pi to this thing. Let's go with this angle. So, if I go with that, what is that angle? That's pi plus pi over 3, right? So I added pi to this. And now that this is 2, if I add pi, then I have, because then this will be the terminal side for this angle. Uh, and there's another way, I can go this way. If I go the other way, I still have 2. But this is minus. So what is this one? This is minus, uh, uh, what is that, pi over 3. It is in fact pi minus pi over 3. Minus uh, pi minus pi over 3, right? Uh, because this is pi minus pi over 3 and it is negative. So that's another, another one with, uh, in this case this is negative, definitely it is negative because this is 2 pi over 3, so that is in fact 2 and minus 2 pi over 3, is it? Yeah. So this is negative and this is positive. But you can always write both of them uh, positive. So you can always add, say, 2 pi to this, for example, and get positive. So if I add 2 pi, then I will get this. So if you have negative uh, angle by adding 2 pi or 4 pi or whatever, uh, you can get a positive number here. Okay, so, and this is in the third quadrant, right? So this is in the third quadrant. But I'm not going to give you another one in the fourth quadrant, you can guess. So we can have negative, positive for both of them, and you now know what positive and what negative is, what positive angle is, what negative angle is. And uh, Uh, another thing is uh, converting. So, so there are two from polar to rectangular, which is okay. I mean, it's not hard, but from rectangular to polar. It is not easy. 
I mean, it's easy in a sense, but uh, uh, it's hard to decide. Uh, but, but that's why, because this polar is not unique. This one is unique. You just get one finish. But this one, I don't know. Okay, should I take negative or positive? What? Blah blah blah. Uh, anyway, so let's see what polar to rectangular is. But well, let's just find a relation between these two. How can I relate r theta and x y? There's just one set of formulas, uh, so let's, uh, let's use this high school geometry here. I have this point, uh, so the polar is theta and r, rectangular is the x and the y, and the x is this side, o, a, h, x is the o, h, and the y is a, h, right? So what, is the, what are the relations? Uh, the relation is simple, x is uh, simply r cosine theta and the y is simply r sine theta. Now, what other relations do we have? Mm. Another thing which is uh, obvious from here is that uh, in this right triangle we have uh, r squared is x squared plus y squared. Uh, what else can I say? Can I write something for tangent? Uh, tangent, well, yeah, I can say that tangent theta is, in fact, y over x. Now, you might say, okay, what if x is zero, which means what if x is on the y-axis? True. I mean, um, a, sorry. When a is on the y-axis, x is zero, so you get infinite. Tangent of theta infinite means that theta is either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. But that, that is in fact a problem. Is theta this or this? If you get infinite. But uh, one, one of them is negative infinite. But uh, okay, so <sighs> that is when the circle uh, comes in. And so this is what we use to convert. Now, now let's uh, go from polar to rectangular. Polar to rectangular is very easy. Let me just uh, uh, erase this and say polar to rectangular. Now what is this given? R theta find x and y. Well, that's very easy. Just in this. Uh, or we'll just ignore that, those two and that's it. So given r theta, r theta, r theta, you have xy. And it's unique. It's uniquely determined by that r theta. And whatever r and theta you have here, negative, positive, whatever, you will get one x and one y. And that's just amazing. Anyway, so that's easy. <laughs> now, rectangular to polar, it's not that easy. So given x, y, find r theta. So, I have to use the other formula, the other two that I have here. And in fact, that's all. r squared is x squared plus y squared, and theta, the relation is simply y over x. Now, the rest is find the point. Use scratch paper, find the point in xy plane, and then decide on uh, r, theta, and whatever. And depending on the situation, you can uh, uh, you, you decide. Do you want negative r? Do you want theta to be positive or negative? And uh, depending on the situation, you, you then you choose which one you go with. Uh, most often, uh, it's better to go with positive r and positive theta. And don't add rotations. So most desirable is positive r and positive theta. 
but the, again I'm saying that depending on the situation you might need the uh, negative R and negative theta so uh, just go by the by your needs anyway so let me give you examples special examples for this one the other one is very easy uh, so let's convert so from R theta examples R theta to x y uh, one let's say we have uh, three and uh, let's go with the first one we had five or six and that is at uh, this point it is somewhere here one two three right and this is five or six and uh, so x is uh, three cosine pi over 6 and y is 3 sine pi over 6 so this is 3 times cosine pi over 6 is uh, square root of 3 over 2 and this is 3 times 1 half uh, so this is uh, 3 square root of 3 over 2 and this is 3 over 2 so I will get a 3 square root of 3 over 2 comma So that's both of them are. Uh, I mean, the x y is unique. Whatever you you add, just two pi to this, nothing happens. Cosine of two pi plus theta is cosine theta. That's why uh, you will get the same thing. Okay, two. So let's give a negative. Uh, say again 4 and minus pi over 3 okay so let's see where this point is and uh, find x and y and compare it's good to it's recommended on at least a piece of paper or scratch paper find this point draw x y axis and find it uh, so when you find the x y coordinates just look if the x is say positive but it shows negative over there then something is wrong so where is it? This point minus pi over 3 is uh, this way and 4 is somewhere here, say. Okay, so this point is minus pi over 3 and uh, so this is the point A. Uh, so, x is uh, 4 cosine minus pi over 3 and y is 4 sine minus pi over 3. Now cosine minus theta is cosine theta. Cosine is a, a, an even function. It kills negative. Sine is an odd function. The, this negative goes out. So what is cosine of pi over 3? Cosine of pi over 3 is a, a 1 half. So I will get 4 times 1 half. This one is 4 times negative root of 3 over 2. So this one will be 2, the x coordinate, and this one will be minus 2 root of 3. So I have 2 and minus 2 root of 3. Uh, does it, uh, is it correct? Yeah, I guess the positive x is positive and y is negative. Okay. So that's what happens. Uh, So let me remind you that cosine minus theta is simply cosine theta, but sine minus theta is minus sine theta. Okay, so that is okay. Uh, I guess that's enough for rectangular coordinates. Uh, Let's do rectangular to uh, the other way around. Uh, so ex examples x comma y to our theta. Uh, you might find some general formulas for this one in uh, on uh, 
some websites or maybe in some books. But my recommendation is don't use that because you don't remember that. Oh my God, you're taking home exam, so now you have access to the book or internet. But anyway, so yeah, let's say x, y, let, let's just take something in, uh, so 3 and uh, 2, say. Uh, I said uh, draw the picture, so you have uh, this point is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, so it's somewhere here, right? So this is 3 and 2. And theta is this, positive, and uh, so. So I would say r is a square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is square root of 9 plus 4, square root of 13. Theta, I write tangent of theta is y over x, 2 thirds. I can write tan inverse, but tan inverse is an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So using tan inverse is okay, but you have to be careful. In this situation, it's okay, everything is positive, so this gives me the theta is tan inverse of 2 thirds. This is perfectly all right. <sighs> okay. So that's it. That is, I'm not going to find it. Uh, you can use your calculator to calculate this uh, theta uh, and leave R right, like that, unless you're doing some uh, problem, real life problem. So you have to write uh, this one, of course. Uh, number two, let's see what happens if I have something in second quadrant. So I will give you an example in each quadrant. And the second quadrant is like this. Uh, so let's say second quadrant is when we have this, and then let's say five. Okay. So that second quadrant, and uh, it is minus three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, five. It's somewhere here, right? Theta and R. <sighs> okay, second quadrant uh, again R is the square root of this one squared is 9 plus 25, so that's square root of 34. Theta, I know the tangent of theta is uh, y over x, 5 over minus 3, so that's minus 5 thirds. What is tan inverse of this? Well, you might use tan inverse, uh, so I would say Theta is related to tan inverse in this form. So tan inverse minus 5 thirds. If you use your calculator, you will get this minus 5 over 3. So this will give me a negative number. In fact, this gives me negative tan inverse of 5 over 3. It's interesting that tan inverse is a and odd function. So it will give you negative, some negative function. What we, what is that negative function that you get? If you use tan inverse, you have this. It gives you this. Tan inverse of y over x will give me this angle. It gives me this angle. But I need this. What should I do? Well, just add 2 pi. Right? If I add 2 pi to this, I will get this, right? So, in this situation, just add the n, sorry, not 2 pi, pi. Uh, adding pi. So, the adding pi will give you the angle. So, it's pi plus this. Okay, so when you have something in second quadrant, we're adding pi. Right? It's negative, so it's pi minus this will get this, right? Pi minus this will get will give me this theta. Okay, so second quadrant, uh, you can use tan inverse, but uh, add pi to the tan inverse. Now, uh, if you are using degrees, this is 90 degrees, and this is something in degrees. I don't know what that is, you can check on your calculator. 
So let's see what happens in the third quarter. What if I have something in the third quarter? So number three is third quadrant, let's say minus three and minus say whatever six. Okay? Uh, so uh, somewhere here. Uh, minus three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it is somewhere here, and uh, so this is the point B. Point B, and uh, I need this and R. R is again R. As I said, you can always uh, is nine plus thirty-six, which is square root of forty-five. You can really leave it as 45, that's okay. Uh, but what happens to theta? We have tangent of theta is minus 6 over minus 3, which is 2. Okay. But what's going on? Because this tan inverse, tan inverse it gives me a positive idea. Tan inverse. It gives me this. How can I get this theta? This is theta. Well, again, you say, okay, just add pi, right? If I add pi, I will get this pi plus this. So pi plus tan inverse of y over x, uh, if I'm in the third quadrant. That's all. Then I, I have positive r and positive theta. And at last, uh, something in the fourth quadrant. So, let me erase this. And uh, the fourth quadrant is number four. Fourth quadrant. Uh, let's say um, fourth quadrant. I have positive and negative. So uh, I'm here. Uh, positive three, one, two, three, negative four, one, two, three, four. So it's somewhere here, right? And I said go with positive theta and positive r. You can go with negative, it's okay. In this case, you say, gee, this is too close to what I need, okay. So fourth quadrant, uh, I have r still uh, three squared uh, plus four squared, which is uh, nine plus 16, which is a five. So R is 5. Tangent theta y over x and that is minus 4 thirds. And the tan inverse will give me what? Tan inverse gives me this, a negative angle. Uh, how can I get the other one if I just simply add 2 pi to this, right? If I add 2 pi, it is 2 pi minus this, right? Because this minus. This is a minus angle. This is minus pi over 3, something. So if I add the 2 pi, I will get that. Uh, some people do not like this thing and they said in uh, uh, first and fourth quadrants simply go with tan inverse, which is correct. In fact, if I go with tan inverse, I will get a negative angle, which is okay. If you are okay with negative angle, then tan inverse works when you are in fourth quadrant. So 
If you don't like uh, positive and uh, negative angle, then this is the, the way you will do it. So you just add 2 pi to uh, tan inverse of theta, and you will get a positive angle. Okay, so again, depending on the situation, you might take negative r, for example, with some positive angle. Say. So that, uh, again, depends on uh, the situation. Now, uh, let's uh, let me uh, continue with uh, giving you functions. What is a function in polar forms? I mean, we know what function is, but how do we, in the rectangular, we write y equals fx. So when the, you write y equals fx, in fact, you're talking about the graph. Because fx is a function, but when you write y equals fx, you're somehow saying, okay, that is, uh, I'm, I'm just referring to the graph of fx. Uh, but anyways, now, here we have, Usually we have x as independent and this one dependent. Now when you uh, draw the xy plane, we have something called the uh, constant x and y lines. So what are the constant uh, x, y lines? Constant x is these lines vertical lines, constant x's are these, so if I draw this, and constant y's are this, okay, so these are constant y lines, horizontal, and these are constant X lines. Vertical. Uh, so, the, this constant X and constant Y is like this. So, if I have the, this grid, so this whole thing is XY grid or rectangular grid. That's a rectangular grid. And the rectangular grid can help us uh, graph, right? So if I have a nice grid, what I do is when I am given y equals fx, I find y's for different x's, say. If I have x1, 2, 3, for example, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and this is 0, then what I do for y equals fx, I might go like this. I say, okay. Uh, independent and independent, independent and y depends on x. So I would go minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, say 1, 2, 3. It doesn't have to be like this, it can be just any. It can be, this can be point 0.1, this can be point 0.25, say, this can be point, uh, I don't know, tell us something. Uh, and then you find y corresponding y's, and on these constant x lines you find corresponding y, corresponding y, corresponding y, corresponding y, and so on, and you graph it. So you will get something like this. Right? You just connect them and you say, okay, this is the graph of the function. So on constant uh, y's, you find these points. And constant x's will give you these vertical lines, and constant y's are horizontal lines. Okay, now what is uh, what? How do we just present a function in polar coordinates? So let me erase this and. Uh, Grid lines in polar coordinates. As you observe, grid lines or a grid in XY system are basically X and Y constant lines. So you can guess and say this is about constant theta and R. What is a constant theta and what is a constant R? So let me um, 
do not do not x and y axis. I don't need the y axis, but anyway, constant theta is if 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 you say theta equals pi over three, say uh, pi over six. Pi over six will be this. But that's that's the positive direction of pi over six, right? What is the negative direction? Negative direction is this way. Pi over four. Pi over three, say. Pi over two. And so on. Just continue this way. And, and so on. So these are constant theta lines. Constant theta. Now what is constant R? Constant R. R equals 1, R equals 2, R equals 3, and so on. 1, 2, 3, and so on. So these are, in fact, constant R lines. It's interesting that these are also perpendicular. <laughs> well, uh, you might say, what is perpendicular? What does perpendicular mean? These are like uh, uh, right angles. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, this is grid. This is, uh, say, polar grid. Rectangular grid was xy constants, and this is r theta constants. So, these are constant theta lines and constant r lines. Okay, what do you suggest? Theta in terms of R or R in terms of theta. That's what I mean. Should I take theta to be the independent variable or R to be independent variable? So when we were, when we find, when, when, when we try to find a point given its polar coordinates, first we go with theta. Remember. First you have this line, the theta line, and then you pick on theta line the given r. So it's like in x, y coordinates, you, you, you usually go with x first. x, y, x, y. Here you have theta, r, theta, r, theta, r. So, well, this is how it goes. So we take this to be independent. Variable and this one to be dependent variable. Now, why is it uh, important to, uh, in say, physics, mechanics, and blah blah? blah. I mean, you have seen so many things uh, which are round. Now, why are they round? Because uh, the, uh, the, I mean, the, those tools or those machines that make used to make uh, things, uh, they would go round. If you go into some old manufacturing plant, you will see everything is just round, boom, boom, go round. Uh, but these days with this uh, 3D printing, uh, <laughs> maybe, well, I'm not saying that this becomes obsolete. No, definitely it, it is not, but it won't become obsolete. Uh, but the 3D printing, uh, I guess that is mostly based on x, y coordinates, not r theta. Uh, and it can just give you anything, in any shape. So that's like, uh, anyway, yeah. it's good. Polar coordinates are nice. Okay, so that is uh, r equals f theta. What, what does this mean? The, the same way that you have functions in x, y coordinate, you would say uh, y equals a x squared plus 5. That's, uh, here you say r equals theta squared plus theta minus 5, right? So in polar, uh, it's like that. Theta is the independent variable and r is dependent. But don't say that you said it's always like that. No, it, it's like uh, in rectangular coordinates, sometimes you have x as a function of y. So there's an item like that, or it depends on the situation, like remember in uh, finding area, sometimes we had to write it as, uh, I mean, reverse it, so x as a function of y. 
So you have to integrate with respect to I mean the y-axis was like the independent variable. So independent that variable was on the y-axis. So anyway, so that is now let me give you some examples of uh, uh, this this function. But this doesn't give me anything in polar. If I graph polar for that, that's nothing. So uh, it's, it's not nothing, it's something, but uh, polar is used for things which are much, much nicer than uh, um, a function like that. So, examples, let's take uh, R is 2 cosine theta. But 2 cosine theta, if I had y equals 2 cosine x, you, you know what that is. But let's see what this thing is. It's much, much nicer than its uh, counterpart in uh, uh, rectangular coordinates. So I need a grid. So, well, suppose we have a, a grid, and that's what I should do. I do this is uh, independent and independent. So I will start from zero, r is two, and uh, then uh, pi over six, pi over six cosine of pi over six is uh, a square root of t over two, so I have square root of three here, then I have pi over four, square root of two over two, that's square root of two, then I have pi over three, it is, uh, uh, no, what am I saying, that is in fact one half. Cosine of uh, cosine of is that's one. So cosine of pi over three is cosine of sixty is one half. Yeah. So I will get one here, and uh, pi over two cosine of pi over two is uh, zero. Then uh, I continue. I continue. So the next one will be pi over six plus this will be. Uh, 4 pi over 2 pi over 3 uh, so pi over 6 plus pi over, that's uh, uh, 30 that's 120 2 pi over 3 I guess that's yeah. so 2 pi over 3 and then do the I have uh, 3 pi over 4 and uh, uh, pi over 3 plus pi over 2 the 6 5 pi over 6 and then pi. Okay. 2 pi over 2, that is like this one, except it is minus square root of 3. It's like this one, minus square root of 2, then like this one, and 0. Minus 1. So, what does it look like? Okay. Uh, 0, it is 2. Pi over 6 is this, pi over 4, pi over 3, so that is root of 3, that is 1.7, it's here, that's 1.2, it's here, and pi over 3 it is 1, it's here, then it's 0, so it looks like this. Then if I continue, I will get this. It's not a nice picture, but I should have drawn the picture first. Then, so let me, I know what it is, so let me just draw the picture, but then uh, I know it's a circle, in fact, and uh, it goes like this, two, but these are, in fact, these. Uh, these are in fact the extensions, right? So this is the uh, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, and uh, pi is this. So it goes like the back, right? To, uh, this is not zero, it's in fact minus 2. And uh, I guess I made a mistake. This should be one. This is one, and this is good. Three. So, so 
that it just goes backwards. So with this thing. Uh, and so you see, this is pi minus two is here. See pi minus two is here. R theta. This is minus two, comma pi. This part is minus two pi, and two zero. These two are the same. Same part. Okay, so that's the other point. And also here we get the same point. Pi the bottom, that's the same. Okay, so this is a circle. It is a circle with the radius one and the it, its center is located at uh, a one zero. A circle with this. Okay, so let me stop and uh, I will continue giving you more examples of uh, polar coordinates in the next uh, lecture. Okay.